Hi all, Hal here with more Empyreon. Well, I shouldn't say with more Empyreon, because this is not just Empyreon, this is Empyreon Alpha. So uh, I was in talking, I was talking with the folks from Ilion Games and they were kind enough to do two things for me. One, they gave me access to their Alpha build. Um, so what we're gonna be doing this week is actually doing a little bit of a preview leading up to the alpha release, which is currently scheduled for this Friday. And so I wanted to you know, give you guys a behind the scenes peek at what you can expect in the new series, because on Friday during the live stream, we are going to go ahead and start our first series in the alpha build. So congrats to the folks over at Elyon for going from the pre-alpha to alpha stage. Not every game makes it that far, believe it or not. <laughs> you know, regardless of what you might see on some of the uh, the Steam style stores, a lot of games never actually make it this far. So, mad props out to you guys for doing it. Um, I have taken a look at some of the alpha content. Have to say, I'm extremely excited for it. So, what I wanted to do is to share that with everybody today and to let you know that basically well we're going to be doing a few episodes this week we're, we're doing one for monday wednesday and then friday and then friday we have also a live stream event with uh imperion where we'll be going through and like i said starting the new series the, the uh, new let's play series so while this these episodes this week are not technically sponsored by the folks at elion games they are uh responsible for me having access to the alpha code. However, they have said no embargo on the content, say what I want to say about the content and they'll take any hits and knocks as they come. So, <laughs> but I have to tell you, there's not a whole lot to, I haven't found a whole lot of negative issues in the game. In fact, I don't think I found any negative issues in the game yet. Uh, there are some things that, you know, might be a little bit different for me, but you know, I, I'm, so far I can't really complain about it. it it's a lot of fun. Um, so today's episode, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we'll go ahead and as you can see, we're set up for the alpha preview. We're going into creative. Uh, we are going to have just the basic starting base spawned in for us and we're starting on aqua so we don't have to worry about anything. Now, because we're in creative, you will not get to see any of the new NPCs today. Um, on Friday during, actually on Friday's episode, we will look at some of the new things like the new drones and the new uh, alien NPCs. But most of that you're actually gonna see in the live stream. That's what we're trying to do is the actual gameplay will be during live stream. Everything else is just gonna be looking at systems and changes to systems that are already in game. All right, so now that we have that out of the way, um, what we're gonna do here is, as you can see, we have all sorts of new graphics. You've got all of this new, very lush under, underbrush foliage. We've got the trees and some of the things like the, uh, you know, the cave beans, also known as coffee beans for everybody who might actually, you know. <laughs> <sighs> But yeah, I mean, this is just, this is crazy. Um, Aqua has become a jungle planet. Now, one of the things that they did change is as you can see here with the map, there's a little bit more detail on the map now. And it looks like, I'm wondering if, because I'm using the same seed, I'm getting basically the same map. So they have not removed the protective caps over the north and south poles yet. Um, I don't know if that is expected to change during the alpha process. It may be when they get out of the alpha and go into beta that you'll see that or even um, waiting until the actual release of the product. Uh, but for now, the protective zones over the, uh, the southern pole as well as the northern pole are still in place, which is unfortunate. It's one of those things that I, you know, one of the things I said I would like to have seen changed. However, it makes sense for right now. We'll see how it goes later on in the development. Uh, there are actually a new, there is a new planet, the Oscutun. Oscutun? Uh -huh. Anyway, it's a new temperate planet. So basically, it's another version of Aqua. And, uh,. This one is a PvE planet as well. It is not a starter planet. It's one of the uh, expansion planets that you'll have to go to for 
resources or just to set up a base. And the other thing to notice, as you can probably hear in the background, are the new ambient sounds. And they are a little bit loud. <laughs> But like everything else, you can t turn down the in-game audio stuff. So, uh, but those ambience, uh, the ambient audio is determined by the biome you're in. So when you switch from the forest biomes over to the water biomes, like the lake biomes, you can hear the the sound of the shore. You can hear the waves crashing on the on the sand. As you get further into the biome, the uh, the ambience become a little bit louder for it because we are still close to the jungle you can still hear those as well uh, one of the things that really did surprise me though especially about all of this I mean then besides the fact that it looks absolutely amazing <laughs> is when you start getting up in height let's see if we can get it to do it is it gonna do it for us Okay, let me, let me head over to the mountain and I'll show you. There are actually the mountains when you are over a specific elevation uh, map. What you get is you start getting wind. This, I think, is adding a lot to the game. Because the, the planets right now in the pre-alpha, you know, seem kind of dead. But now you're getting all of these ambient sounds, so you're getting actual environmental sounds in the game. This is just, yeah. It makes you feel like you are actually here. Let's go ahead and kill the jumps. And so, as you can see, they have changed the load on demand features. You are seeing more detail further out now. And I do have my graphics set fairly high. I don't think I... Well, actually, I think I may, I may actually have them set to maximum. Uh, but as you can tell, depending on where you are on the planet, your textures will change. So where we have a little bit of the ambient grass texture here, if you go down into the valley, you you know, like you saw earlier, you'll get the, the really lush grass and the trees. And yeah, this is just oh, such a beautiful game. I mean, it was beautiful before, but the, the changes are just crazy. And see, as you since we are still in the, the uh, other biomes, you are getting the atmosphere overlap. Right. So let's head back to the base. And this is the nice thing about being in creative mode. <laughs> no fall damage. <laughs> and what we're going to do next is we're going to go take a look at the blocks that are in the game because they have made changes to the way the blocks uh, are not only created but used in the game um, previously there was this huge interface of all of these blocks that you could make and this is the other thing about the ambience if you don't want to hear it when you're outside you just walk inside close the door actually you don't even have to close the door but you know <laughs> Once you're inside, it takes away the ambient uh, detection, so you don't get all of the ambient noises. So if you get frustrated because, you know, while they are an awesome audio effect, you know, being stuck in them for hours on end, you might get a little tired of it. So you just walk inside and, hey, you're good to go. So let's go ahead and walk through here. This is one of the uh, the the default point of interest uh, pre-built bases, obviously. So let's go into the construction. Let's show you what we've got now. Okay, so we're going to start with the uh, the tools and weapons. So a lot of the things that you're used to, the O2 bottle is still here, the color change and rotate tool. Uh, they've actually made a few changes to things. So the color tool used to just be a a, a block painter, right? So now what it does, what that tool has been changed to is a change in rotate tool. This allows you to build things, put them in place and in, uh, decide to go, oh, you know, I need to rotate a block or I need to rotate a, something that's been placed already. You can use this to actually do that. And since we are in creative, let's go here. We're going to grab one of these. We are going to grab 
the color tool. We're also going to grab the texture tool and then obviously the chainsaw and the drill level two. Okay, so when we use this, it's, I believe it is the is it, is it left because it, it's small devices. I know. Okay, there we go. So what you'll see now is when you select the block. As you can see, there is a green line. That's the, basically the axis that you'll rotate on. Now, to change the position of a block, you e you use either home or uh, end. Let's see if it's gonna let me do it. It's gonna let me do it. Uh, do you have to be so close? There we go. So when you're when you're looking at it, you press home and end to change it on that axis, if, or the axes rather. If you want to change the axes that you are rotating on, you use insert and delete, which will change it to the X, Y, or Z axes. So now if we do home, you can now rotate in place. Um, I don't think that it's going to work on the larger appliances like the generators, and I don't think it'll work on the constructor. Let's see. All right, let's, can we get it to? I don't know if I just have to be like right here. Yeah, no, see, it's not going to work on the larger appliances. Okay. So it does work on the doors, it will work on other things. Um, and then on the windows that have the, the transparency, you can change like the, the, old, the old windows, you obviously can't because these don't have the same transparency, but on the new windows, uh, you can actually use this to change which side of the, uh, the facing of the transparency as well. So since we're in here, let's go take a look at this. We're gonna change over here, let's go in here. All right. Uh, so as you can see, all of our weapons are in here. They have updated a couple of the items. Uh, we've got some new things in here. There's a new fuel type called biofuel. Now, this actually requires you to do environmental harvesting. In the water biomes, there are now seaweed. And um, I think we have some in the lake out here, and I can take you out to show you what it looks like. But basically what you have to do is you have to collect seaweed, and for every five seaweed you collect, you can make one biofuel. Now, the biofuel is just a new type of ammo. It works uh, for the chainsaw currently. I have not been told if that will be something that is more utilized like as a potential fuel supply for vehicles at some point. But right now, it only is used as, a, as the ammo for the, uh, the chainsaw system. Right. Just to keep those types of things in mind. Okay, so we have the new paint system. Now this is actually kind of cool. So when you have the painter equipped, you right click, it brings up a palette selector, right? As you can see, there is page one of one. What this means is that they've built the system so that as things are added to the game, if they wanna add more paints, they will be able to do so very simply by adding it to the palette. Um, because this is, you know, this grid is much bigger than what you're seeing here. It splits it on the page. So right now there is only the one page, but as you can see, there's a lot more color options than what were here previously. Now, by default, when you left click with whatever, whatever color is selected, you are only painting that one face. You do not paint the whole block anymore. If you want to paint the whole block, when you're in the color selector, there is a, a radial button right here. You say apply to whole block. And when you paint it, it now paints the entire block. This is really important for a couple of reasons, um, because every block now, there is only a basic block. Let's see if we can show you here. Right, so you have basic blocks that are based on specific material types. So you have steel blocks, which are your the old metal block. There is a hardened steel block, which is the, the heavier armor style blocks. Uh, there's now concrete and wood. The reason why it's important with the painting is because each of these blocks, these base blocks, have different statistics. Uh, they have different durabilities, different hardness, whatever you want to say. And let's go in here really quick and I will show you. Let's grab one steel block, we'll harden steel, wood, cement, and those are fine. Okay, so let's 
bring these over. Actually, this, this is the easy way. Okay. So, your steel blocks, right? You have 15 armor, 50 hit points, 120 mass. 15 armor, 100 hit points, 250 mass for the hardened steel. We get into wood, no hit points or armor. Cement has 15 armor, 15 hit points, which makes it a lighter version as far as durability is concerned uh, than the iron block or the metal, the steel blocks. But these three blocks, the new blocks, can only be used at bases. You cannot use these for vehicles. This is where the painting tool comes into, a, the painting and texture tools come into effect. Because now, what you'd be able to do is, let's say, you know, if you wanted to have a blue face, this allows you to have a blue face on the wall without actually painting the entire block. Now, the same thing is true with this tool, the texture applicator. Now, what you can do is actually place a wooden block and give it a different texture. So it doesn't matter what the block's materials are, you can give it whatever texture you want that's available in the picker. And as you can see here, there are currently two pages of materials. So even though we have a basic block here, these are the, the simple metal blocks, by the way, you can make it look like wood. So this allows you to have these type these material types being used on the ships but you're actually not compromising anything and this is very important especially for the folks that like to do the more aesthetic builds and then if you want to change the color of it since we have the texture let's look at the colors and see what we can do with the color so you can apply pretty much any combination to almost anything. Does it work in the light? Yeah. <laughs> so including the doors, pretty much all of the blocks are paintable now. Um, so you can make what you want. This is, yeah, like I said before, it's absolutely phenomenal what they've done. The, uh, the folks, you know, the, there's been a lot of let's say comparison between them and other games like them um, that may be older to market but um, I have to say where they may have been trailing before they are now leading the way <laughs> in certain aspects and it's great to see this I mean just being able to have been part of what's been going on so far is is a lot of fun so thank you guys from Elion I really appreciate the ability to to take a look at these early builds um, and to share this with everybody so one of the final pieces I shouldn't say final pieces let's look at it this way okay so for the folks who like to do the base building as you may remember placing on water has always been the best place to build your base if you're trying to find somewhere to build without having to level you cannot do that with water anymore uh, they have put in the basics of a new water system the water actually flows around the blocks now so when you drop in you now have the new underwater sound effects as well as the new water uh, particle effect and image as you can see we now have bubbles in the water there's a distortion in here when you come out of the water you get a nice little you know water down the face mask kind of thing so it's just they've gone out of their way to make this as as immersive as possible and i have to say i'm really really enjoying it i'm kind of excited to see what people do with these things as they uh, they get further along in the development because i know there's a lot of people in the the what we have for a modding community right now specifically in the ship builders that are doing amazing things with the pre-alpha builds I can only imagine what they're going to be doing once they get it, their hands on the alpha stuff. Um, so look, while we're here, let's do a quick. So when you're placing blocks now, you right click with the block active and you get to choose what shape you want. And this is how they've basically cleaned up the manufacturing process. All blocks now require the same resource uh, based on the base block type. So the metal blocks are two metal plates the heavy metal blocks are or heavy steel blocks i think are four i don't remember 
All right, let's take a look really quick. Go look at the tech trees really fast. Do we have them over here? Oh, okay. So every, all of the block types are unlocked at start then. Okay. And let's go ahead and get that out of here. Let's take a look at the resource requirements for that block. All right, so hardened steel, yes, is four metal plates. Concrete is one cement, one purified water, and then the wood blocks are one wood plank. Now, in order to make the wood planks, you have to go out and harvest trees. In order to harvest trees, you have to have the next tool, which is the chainsaw. <laughs> so your biofuel gives you 124 or 125 fuel units. Each harvest, uh, to harvest each tree takes approximately 20 fuel, I think is what it worked out to in uh, my testing. We'll, we'll run over to a tree and give it a try here really quick. And what you'll do is you just basically walk up to it and just like anything else, you uh, left click. Yeah, so it's 23 to harvest the, the tree. And the, each tree will give you, oh, well, that's giving me only three. Um, I've seen as much as five wood come off of a single tree, so you're going to get, depending on the tree, and I think it is probably depending on the tree type, like this one should give me five, I think. Let's see. Basically, the bigger the tree, the more wood you're going to get. There we go. Yeah, and there's the five logs. All right. So, you now have the, the wood logs, you take those back over to the crafting station. You turn that into planks and then you use the planks to build your wood blocks. Um, and then again, each of the block types are only based on material. It does not limit the shapes that you can use with those blocks. So when we uh, come back on Wednesday, we'll actually get more into the, the block system as well as the base building portion of the system. We will stay in creative for now. And that way we can build, you know, just some things to show how the structural integrity works as well as the new base building process. Some of the other things that we're going to be doing later this week is we'll start looking at some of the new systems for Friday's episode. We're going to look at the things like the PDA missions, uh, the new blueprint system, as well as discussing some of the planetary changes because they are introducing or planning to introduce the ability for people to customize planets. You'll be able to put in at least one custom planet in the system that you yourself have created. And uh, I think they're saying you'll be able to adjust ratios for like land to water and other things. But we'll, we'll come back and visit that on Friday or yeah, Friday. All right. So the only other thing to look at right now is going to be the last of the tools. And this is the drill mark two or the tier two drill. So we are, because we're in creative, we don't get all of the wonderful little resource markers. Somebody's been playing Seven Days to Die. <laughs> it's like, wow, Goldenrod. I'm, I'm, try, I'm sitting here trying to pick it up going, why can't I pick up the gold? Oh, wait, wrong game. Hmm, okay. <laughs> yeah, survival zombie games, right? Oh, I hope that doesn't mean we're getting zombies in the... Well, actually, zombies in this game might be kind of interesting. But uh, we'll, we'll leave that alone. That's a completely different topic. Uh, but yeah, so what we can do with this is when you're using the old drill, uh, both of, both drills get 750 fuel units per charge. Uh, this one does mine at roughly the same rate as the Tier 1 drill. If you do left-click, you get the slightly faster resource removal if you right click you get the you know a little bit more of a finite control and if you do both you burn through your ammo really quickly but you also excavate a large portion of land very fast which is fine okay and as you can see the textures do maintain all the way down so until you get into a different terrain type you will keep these textures here um, so as we get into the, the stone See, we are now in stone. Now we're picking up crushed stone. Yay! Okay, so as you see, I'm not dropping any resource. What's going on is when you're using the tech tier 2 drill, the drill auto collects for you. So you don't have to keep spamming the T button to pick things up, which is, you know, 
for somebody who is notorious for strip mining planets, I have to say, Elion, my keyboard thanks you. Because <laughs> that is definitely one of the things that, oh, yeah, my, my poor keyboard. I actually have to go back and manually make sure that I've inserted T's because I've pressed that bloody T button so many times that my keyboard does not always recognize it <laughs> anymore. <laughs> so it's greatly appreciated. Thank you very much for that. Um, and hopefully, because we now have an automated crap, well, I shouldn't say automated, we have enhanced resource gathering um, by way of the new uh, harvester. Is it in here? Yeah. So, because we have the new harvester piece, uh, and this is equipable only on HVs, but because we have this, I'm hoping that that means that we will see drilling mods that do the same thing. One of the questions that I had somebody ask was that when you have this in place, how do you get the resources out of it? Um, basically, what happens is, is that when you have an HV built and you put this thing on the front of it, or on the back of it, or wherever you you want to mount it, it has its own hitbox, so it acts as its own form of storage. So you don't have to have a conveyor system or any type of piping network going from this to a storage block currently. Um, however, that is something that I would like to see them implement somewhere down the road. Um, they're like I said before, one of the other games that they are compared to regularly does have a system like that in place and I personally a I prefer, personally prefer it because it allows me to have a central storage location within the, the vehicle that I have built so all of the resources that I gather regardless of the types of resources are in one location uh, when they get to the point where the, hopefully they're adding in the mining tools and other uh, forms of resource gathering they'll have something that will convey the resources from the gathering tool to the general inventory but for now you basically go out you, you chop down trees with this thing and you walk over and press T when you're looking at the front of the blades and that'll open up an inventory which I think is 24 I think it's 24 blocks um, I don't have an HV built so I can't place this thing right now uh, but yeah we will definitely get into some of the ship and base building because we do want to talk about structural integrity. And that will be next time uh, on Wednesday's episode. So if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you hit that like button on your way out. Uh, one of the things that I did want to talk about, dun, 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 they've also given me a code. Elian Games has provided a code to be given away this week. Uh, so what we're going to do, and I will have a separate a video also announcing it, and I'll reference that video in the description of this one. So in case I release that video first, you know, we'll reference you over there. But basically, we're giving away a free copy of the game. Uh, the copy has been provided by Elian Games, so thank you guys very much for that. I j greatly appreciate it. And it's your last chance to get the game. This week is the last chance to get your game on Steam at the current pricing. There is a There was a statement made that when Alpha comes out, the price of the game is going to increase. I think it's currently $15 on Steam. I have to check the pricing. So, um, But it will be going up by a couple of bucks. So if you haven't gotten a copy already and you don't want to take your chance on the contest, you, know, you might want to go ahead and buy a copy. If you are wanting to take a chance on the contest, here's your chance. So basically what we're going to do is I'll have a contents link. Uh, there's going to be a couple of different ways for you to enter and there's going to be a bunch of different entries available per person and it should be pretty straightforward so take definitely take a look at that link like I said I will if I remember to I will put the link on the on screen for you but I will also put a direct link into the description of the video just so that everyone knows where to go uh, so on that note I'm going to say thank you once again to everyone for stopping in today I hope you enjoyed this first of our series of quick looks at the new alpha build of Imperion's Galactic Survival. I also want to say thank you to Elian Games for making not only this video possible, but the giveaway possible. Uh, and hopefully everyone that enters, well, good luck to you. As always, folks, take care and be safe out there, everybody. All right. Time to go destroy some trees. <laughs>